women. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. God, for me, born to reign as king. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, for the Lord, God, for me, born to reign as king. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now I know this is a Catholic congregation, but if anyone in the back would like a seat up front, there's no extra charge. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So my brothers and sisters, just a little clarification for for the sake of um, uh, sometimes it's easy to mix up because the, ch the, the church always gives us ah someone taking a very front seat <laughs> thank you Barbara <laughs> I took a bath this week so it's okay <laughs> um, a lot of times because of this gospel reading is always chosen in this celebration we can mix up the immaculate conception and, 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 and think it's the same thing as the Annunciation. And of course, they're two different realities, but closely connected to each other. That's why the church gives them to us together. The Immaculate Conception is whose conception? Mary. Where did, was she conceived? In, in St. Anne's womb. In the womb of her mother, St. Anne. That's right. Through the love of Joachim and Anne. All right. So, and she was conceived without sin through the power of the Holy Spirit, which was poured out through the merits of her son. And of course, you say, but her son wasn't born yet, so how could that happen? Because the merits of the cross of Jesus Christ, his incarnation, his death, his resurrection, the sending of the Holy Spirit, all of those graces transcend time. And God gave the gift of that grace to Mary so that she might be a worthy vessel of the incarnation, the Word becoming flesh inside of her, uh, Jesus being met, made flesh inside of her, her son. And so we celebrate this feast, putting the two together, because we know that the incarnation, excuse me, the Immaculate Conception was the God preparing a worthy mother for himself. That was God's preparation for a worthy mother um, for himself. And, um, and it's so incredibly fitting that we begin this 
jubilee of mercy on this feast, this solemnity, which is the highest feast of the church, um, of the Immaculate Conception. And why? Because what we see in Mary is what this jubilee of mercy is all about, personified in this one person. And personified and begun to be um, this holy nuclear explosion that would radiate the whole world with holiness, with hope, <clears throat> in the midst of despair, to radiate to the whole world this holy, holy nuclear power of divine grace, divine mercy. And um, in this feast, this, excuse me, this, um, this jubilee of mercy is all about God's intention. What God does, he wants all of us, God, God wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And through that knowledge to experience the fullness of salvation through faith in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, but all men have sinned and now unable to approach the throne of grace. There is a chasm between us and God. And and so, but God, we know, has provided the bridge between fallen humanity and the holiness of God. And that is in the person of Jesus Christ. And, and this, this jubilee of mercy is all about God pouring out by God inspiring Pope Francis for what God wants to do to pour out an extraordinary grace of divine mercy for this world that is slipping deeper and deeper into darkness. And the darker the world is, the more the light of Christ has the potential to shine and to be seen, no longer to be hidden. When Jesus came the first time, we know that he was hidden. Only a few recognized him. Some people saw, many saw the star, but they didn't know what the star represented. They had a vague understanding. Something, yet, yet all of humanity was stirring. All of humanity was experiencing this rippling, this tremor of a hope in the midst of um, tremendous um, despair, tremendous darkness, a light in the midst of so much darkness. All of, you, all of creation, in fact. And in fact, let me suggest that God gave the first rippling at the time of the, of the um, Immaculate Conception. Because at the Immaculate Conception of Mary, God, as I, as I already mentioned, um, he, he manifested his mercy in an extraordinary way, in a way that um, we experience um, kind of a, a, maybe a wave of it, you might say, that is to carry us, but because we, we, don't, uh, we don't receive this mercy fully, that wave kind of passes us, and we're like, we wait, await the next wave of God's grace, but with Mary, she received this profound wave, this ocean of grace, and, and stayed in that from the moment of her conception. She, in fact, um, she is a, um, she is a, a, a uh, personification of God's divine mercy. Um, the fullness of what God intends for all of us is, can be seen in our Blessed Mother, in what he did in preserving her from sin, but not just preserving her from sin, she was full of grace, full of grace, um, exuding grace and mercy. We speak, we call one of the titles of Mary is Mother of Mercy. She's the Mother of Mercy because in her we see mercy, um, par excellence and um, and so 
when we, when we celebrate this year of mercy, this jubilee of mercy, um, we ask our Blessed Mother to pray for us that we might be receptive to this unique grace, this unique opportunity. Um, it's, uh, um, we, we ask you to pray for us that we might not miss this visitation of the Lord. The Lord is going to visit us during this jubilee. Um, we are wise to consider and ask the Lord at the beginning of this time, what is it that you want to do, Lord? What do you want to do, Lord? You know, like, I can't wait. Like a, like a child, not sure what the gift's gonna be under the Christmas tree. I can't wait, Lord. What is it you're gonna do? I wanna see it, Lord, show me. Show me what you're going to do, Lord. And give me a heart ready to receive it. Let a childlike um, excitement stir in my heart about what you want to do. What do you want to do in me? By your grace, your mercy, as you did in Mary. Remember Mary said when the angel spoke to her, she said, um, let it be done unto me. Let it be done unto me. In other words, she didn't do it. She said yes to this grace. So we want to say to the Lord, let it be done unto me, Lord. Yes. Let it is. Whatever you want in this jubilee of mercy, I want it too, Lord. And I need it. Please, yes, Lord, yes. And then the second part is, like with Mary, we want to pray with her and let it flow through me. Let this mercy, let this mercy so flood my heart that it just oozes out. That every, every aspect of my life is a, a manifestation of divine mercy, a revelation of divine mercy. Um, and so we should ask the Lord for those two intentions and, and really have a kind of like, boy, oh boy, I can't wait to see what that's going to look like, Lord. I can't wait, Lord. Because in a certain sense, we have the capacity to receive what we expect. So if we expect a little bit, our capacity is going to be little. But if we expect much, our capacity is going to be expanded. And we will receive more. And the and the um, the the um, uh, the example of this is in the divine mercy image, uh, where Jesus is pointing to his heart, and he is blessing with his right hand and pointing to his heart with his left hand, saying, "This is the blood and water that flowed out for you." And at the bottom is our response: Jesus, I trust in you. And if you remember in this devotion, we are told that when we trust much, when we trust little, we receive little. But when we trust much, we receive much. And so one of the things to, on our part, the decision we want to make during this Jubilee year is to put all of our weight, all of our investment, to, to, to divest from everything else that we put our trust in and put it all in Jesus in this time, to, to take from our other investments and say, no, I take them from there. I'm taking them all from there. I'm putting them all here in Jesus. And to do that with a firm resolve in this time, expecting that the Lord will give the very greatest return on that, on that giving of ourselves. Because we see Mary as the beautiful example of of that total surrender, that her soul magnifies the Lord, how to be able to, and we'll get to sing that later. Um, how May that be our prayer more and more in this jubilee of mercy. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen.